Hey guys, stream here again. This movie with Luffy was the Swordsman, part two. Now, I'm gonna record a bunch of videos tonight, so I, I hope that I put them out. Some of them are gonna be new, some of them are gonna be different. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. But, um, that's what's up with Logtown and Luffy. Did not even not having any, like, gum gum fruit. Won't really, I guess. But between him and Smoker would be different since this Luffy right now has hockey. Not like Armament or Conquerors. We have Conquerors. But he has observation hockey, and he's he's okay at it. And he's helping Zoro, Hamapo, and Kobe. The rest of them get it. So uh, yeah, and um, Luffy got away from Smoker by by I guess hiding his jute or his like main weapon, like the sea stone at the end of it. Luffy learning the Smoker's um, weapon had sea stone at the at the end of it got an idea. So this may help from Wano a little bit. So, um, yeah. Now, Luffy, after after him, the Strahd got away from Buggy, after Luffy ended up making Buggy get just stuck in the, gets in the shackles that Roger was in, like, not shackles, but thing that Luffy got stuck in in canon, Buggy, Buggy got stuck, got stuck in that instead, and Luffy made Buggy get electrocuted. So, Buggy's not dead, but he is just down, down for the count. He, he doesn't want to move anymore. The Strahd ended up escaping, and they sail up the reverse mountain. Now, Luffy will use observation to make sure there's no one following them, as they did make it ruckus with the Marines and Buggy's crew. So, he thought there'd be a lot of Marines or a lot of pirates after them. But they're not around, but he does see a giant rock at the end of it. I love he's about to slice it apart until he sees their scars on the rock. Or damage, he's like, scars on a rock? As he can tell, those aren't like, like regular cracks, those are scars. Scars with the Oh god, that's a living thing. And he yells, yells towards Zoro, and... Is it physically strongest besides him and Zoro would be Sanji? He has those two help him, and they they push them. like he tells them don't don't like hurt it, but get out of the way. With Zoro and Luffy need to like just push it or shove it. Sanji needs to like Sanji only uses his feet, so there's gonna be like one way. So Sanji just got to take off his shoes and just drop kick it. So they jump off the boat and off, off the Mary, I guess, and they push it as hard as they can. Or Zoro and Luffy will shove it, and Sanji will drop kick it, and that it is Laboon. So once Laboon's far enough away. They are like, panting as they're in the water, and Luffy's not drowning, so they don't need help. But Laboon's pissed now is about to eat them. Luffy just like says, Zoro, wanna try it? Zoro says, eh, sure, why not? Luffy will grab Zoro by the feet and throw him up in the air, and Luffy will kick Sanji's feet towards the Laboon's, like, well, I say Sanji actually kicks Luffy's feet down towards the Laboon's lower jaw. But Zoro and Luffy will just hold it in his mouth as Sanji will jump into the mouth and kick it, like, just through its mouth, making Laboon just ship in the air and... And just tumble in the air for a bit. They fall to the ground, and Luffy and Zoro just land on the moon's back because they let go midair. Land and Nami, Kobe, Hanapo are looking at them, and Usopp. Like, the hell is this? They made Laboon do a flip in the air. And as soon as Hanapo and Kobe saw this, because there's still training to catch up with the rest of the crew. Like, Nami, if she tried hard enough, she'd probably beat both of them. They're pretty good with like their axes and well Kobe Humble's pretty good with his axe and Kobe's pretty good with like like his feet. Because that's something that most men uses to fight. But Kobe and Humble instantly start doing push-ups and squats like as much as they can. Humble just like repeatedly slashing the air with his axe. <laughs> and Crocus had heard like or well, he felt what happened to Laboon. So he goes outside, like looks at uh, sort of Laboon's mouth and he's like, what the hell just happened? He saw a ship. He's like, that ship possibly, possibly couldn't have made Laboon flip in the air multiple times. He then looks up the top, he looks up top, seeing Luffy and Zoro just like panting. And then he sees Sanji at the bottom just like panting as well. And that took a lot of energy to kick. Like, did you three hurt Laboon? Sanji then says, maybe, maybe not. But with how durable his whale is, it, at most we bruised it. And he looks at where Sanji and Zoro, had, Sanji, Luffy, and Zoro had like pushed or kicked. And he sees there's two feet, there's like two footprints. Well, that's where Sanji was. There's two handprints where Zoro's was, and there's two more where Luffy was. But then he sees, he looks up above Laboon, like, he's on Laboon's tongue at this point, and looks up and sees there's, like, just one giant, like, just, like, imprint of a foot, and that's Sanji's. And says, I'm counting four bruises. And Sanji then says, but your whale should have moved. Crocus then says, Laboon's trying to go up a bridge mountain. Sanji and Luffy are like, why? Zoro's like, Zoro just doesn't care. Crocus will kind of explain, he'll, he'll get off of Laboon, he'll get out of Laboon's mouth and go to the lighthouse and explain Laboon's backstory to the Straw Hats. 
Luffy then says, I don't know, you seem to know a lot. And you've been through the Grand Line. Well, you, you, you talk like you've been through the Grand Line before. Ferguson says, yeah, I've been through, been through there a few times. Luffy, Luffy hears a few times. He then says, I've been in the New World. Luffy doesn't know what this is. He's aware of it. He, like, Ace has, wrote him, has written him letters. And this one, Crocus says, someone this, someone, someone bare, not even in the Grand Line yet knows what the New World is. He says, yeah, my, 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 my older brother is in it. And Crocus says, who's your older brother? Luffy just, just says, I mean, can I trust you? But Crocus says, yes, yes, you can. Luffy brings Crocus aside. And away from the Straw Hats, like away from even Zoro, because Zoro's like Luffy's best friend, and he's not even telling Zoro this. He says his name is Gold the Ace. Ferguson says, uh, "Name of my captain." Luffy just like screams, like, "What the hell? What do you mean?" Ferguson first will whisper in Luffy's ear, saying, "Goldie Roger was my captain. I was his medic." He says, "I have a question," and he's being answered urgently. Luffy then looks up as he like felt something was off, and he swings his sword. Ferguson was questioning what it was until he looks behind Luffy. Because Crocus didn't have his hockey activity, because I can assume Crocus has hockey, and he was a member of the Roger Pirates, so there's, there's, there's no doubt he had hockey. Looks behind Luffy, because he didn't have his activated, and he saw a blade. Luffy chopped it clean in half. And the blade was made of solid steel, with a wooden hilt. Luffy cut through the steel pretty easily, and the wood. Luffy looks up, saying, hmm. He then jumps up towards Vivi and Mr. Nine, and Mr. Nine tried to jump away using his sword, like, he tried to use a sword to smack, away, smack at Luffy. I forgot, I forgot what weapon he used. Luffy just smacks away the sword and kicks Mr. S Mr. Knight into, into like the red line. He's knocked out. Luffy wants to like just punch Vivi, but Sanji will block his block his punch, saying he never hit a woman. Luffy says the woman's trying to kill us as she tries to stab Sanji. Luffy just grabs her arm and turns the blade on her. So Mr. Knight's knocked out and Vivi is not 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 knocked out, but she's kind of held captive. Luffy just tells Zoro and Nami to restrain these two. Nami restrains Vivi. Zoro restrains Mr. Nine. But Luffy will finish talking to Crocus, and Crocus then just asks Luffy, How do you feel that attack coming, or how do you know it was coming? And Luffy then says, Oh, uh, what, what did my grandpa call it? What do you call it? Because Luffy unlocked hockey at around age, I want to say 11, and I'd say Garp was still coming to the island to make sure they're okay. And Garp was like, Oh, you're a hockey user. And Luffy says, Oh, yeah, hockey. And he then says, I'm, I'm trying, trying to teach my crew the rest of I'm trying, trying to also teach the rest of my crew hockey. The other swordsman is the best, or the closest one to it. Because Crocus says, "You know, I'm a hockey user myself. I know, I know, I'll, I know both types. The third type isn't really my thing." He says, "The third type?" Crocus says, "The will of a conqueror." He says, "Describe it to me." Crocus describes what conquerors can do. He says, "Oh, I've used it once." Crocus says, "Wait, you've used it? How old are you?" He says, "I'm 17." Crocus face palm, saying, "Wow, oh, I'm surprised you weren't born in the New World or the Grand Line." We just laugh, saying, Hey, really? Crocus says, You're one of the strongest pirates that's come through here in years. Like, years. Like, since Roger's era, no one no one besides the Marines have come come through here that strong. We literally just laugh, saying, I guess I'm special. And, Buggy, I'm Buggy. Crocus says, hmm. If you guys stay here for two days, I can probably teach at least two or three, two or three of you, two or two or three of your crew members, con not conquerors, observation hockey. While you and your swordsman, you can train in, in armament and observation. I'll give you a list on how to train. Luffy then says, how about a day and a half? Crocuson says, at least, at least two of you can probably learn observation. Crocuson, well, at least light observation, not like expert observation like yours. Luffy says, mine's not expert. I just have really good senses on top of observation. Crocuson says, oh, well, even, even more surprising, to be honest. Luffy calls him over, and he doesn't explain the whole backstory of what he talked about with Crocus, just that he can teach us hockey, as he knows what it is. Crocus wrote out a training routine for Luffy, Vivi, and Zoro, and he teaches the rest of them like observation hockey. Now, to keep it a little more simple, I'm gonna say that Usopp and Sanji they are, they are the ones to actually learn it, as Usopp's affinity is more needed for for observation. And I'm pretty sure Oda even specified that Zoro and Sanji have their own specialties for hockey. Like Sanji's is observation, but he doesn't know both armament and observation, and Zoro's is armament hockey, even though he has both observation and armament. So, Luffy's going to teach Zoro, oh, to teach Zoro observation, and at this point, Luffy is able to summon at least, at least, like, one arm full of, full of, um, armament hockey, and after around the day and a half, say, Usopp has, is decent at observation, and Sanji, he's not, like, Luffy's level, but he's, but he's better than Zoro at this point. 
The Zoro was was not good at, at observation so far, but he's getting better. But he was able to at least coat his whole sword in on uh, Arnett Hockey. So far in this crew, Luffy's the best at observation. Well, Cro well Crocus had like written out something for Kobe and Nami as they as he thinks they'd be the most responsible. So Sanji just figures out that he should probably use like one of his ways he trains. One of the ways he thinks he should train his observation would be using it in cooking. As he would find the best parts of the food to feed the straw hats, or at least not me. And that's the way he trains his observation, finding out the best parts of the food, or finding out, and he'd use that to find out the best parts to hit on a human body. So, they get to Whiskey Peak, and BB must not just emails how, how hard the straw are training for this. Like, Luffy's, Luffy at this point is being surpassed in, in armament hockey by Zoro. Like, Zoro's armament, Luffy can't even figure out how to channel it into a blade yet. Well, Zoro, that's the first thing he did, was channel it into a sword. So Luffy's, tr Luffy's trying to catch up with Zoro by, like, just throwing slashes or he's punching the air using using his arm in hockey. Then he'll put something on his fist that's that's used for battle and coat that in hockey. So Luffy's trying to, like, get, get to the blade slowly but surely. By the time they get to Whiskey Peak, Luffy can do the same thing that Zoro can. As Luffy's, Luffy's a quick learner. And Luffy, I'd say his hair, like, I'd say his hair, like, he doesn't cut his hair. He just lets it grow. But if it's, like, like too far to like his waist, he cuts it. Like, there's, like, a certain length he wants to cut it at. Excuse me real quick. Alright, uh, I think I'll just like, talking about Luffy's hair. But Luffy lets his hair grow. Then, if it gets to his, like, was, like his waist or something, he cuts it. But regular Luffy's hair is probably, like, around, like, his chin. That's, like, his hair length. It's around, like, at best, I, I say it's, like, Nami's length. It goes, or, a little, or a little bit longer. So, like, his shoulders or like... Yeah, that was collarbone, shoulders, whatever you want to say. So, they get to Whiskey Peak, and Luffy is already a decent, started like, good user at Armin Hockey. Zoro and Luffy are, like, tied for Armin Hockey now. Sanji is doing, like, he's not that good at it, but he's trying. And Luffy, Luffy will help him train in that. And uh, his blades are named Yuno and Sai... Yeah, no, not Yuno. Yusen and Sino. So, Sino is, I believe, the Tonto on his back. I used to call it Wakizashi, but I think I get the name wrong, so it's called Tonto. That's, size, that's Sino. And then the longer blade on his back, or at least the regular size sword, is, is Yusen. So, uh, yeah. Now, the, the, they get to Whiskey Peak, and I'd say that, I'd say that Luffy had like, just sense killer intent from some of the people there. So, she had... It, he let Zoro drink to his heart's content, let Sanji do it, but Nami, it's not, he told them to be on guard. Kobe and Hopo were not allowed to get off the ship. They, they had to, like, Luffy made them stay on the ship and train. Kobe secretly used the training, they used a paper that had the techniques to train on it with him, him and um, Hopo. So, he's trying to sneak, get ahead get of the triads on this one, this one. But, uh, yeah. Now, when the attack does happen, Usopp is awake, so is Nami, so is Luffy. Luffy sees a lot of the, like, a large group of them charging at him. A large group of the, I guess, bounty hunters. Mr. Miss Five, not Mr. Five. Miss Monday is, like, the buff woman with pink hair. Luffy sees her and a lot of other people running at him. So Luffy then says, this technique should be useful. Because he wants to use it against smokers. He thinks it's enough to catch him off guard. Luffy gets in a stance that's resembling Zenitsu from Demon Slayer. Someone had, had recommended this, and I, I'll take it. It's pretty good. Luffy would yell, Thunderclap with Flash. That's how Boom is heard, and it resembles Thunder. And then, he's on in a flash. Luffy's behind the large group of people as Miss Monday falls to the ground unconscious, so do the other group, so the, like, the group of people behind her. Now, Luffy moves so fast that one giant flash of observation and armament mixed together was able to take down the whole group. Luffy was able to make multiple slashes, Mix of arm and hockey and targeting each, each individual using observation, it was enough to hit them all. Now, Luffy will close his sword, close his, close his sword and Kobe and Hump and Humpo were watching, thinking they should jump in and help Luffy. But they saw that one technique was enough to take them down. They only saw one single slash, only one. Well, Nami and Usopp saw what Luffy did. Luffy just chuckled, saying, saying that, should, that should come in handy later. And Vivi and Mr. Nine are asleep on the ship, so uh, yeah. Now, Louis, Louis saw his observation, op, like, he saw his observation activated in case someone tries to run at him again. This is something swimming fast traveling towards him. Louis will dodge the way and throw, throw, throw Sino at one of the men. 
a woman, no, well, I guess it would be a man, but throws, he dodges the explosion and throws a knife at the man, and with the speed that Luffy threw that, actually barely, barely misses Mr. Five. Surprising says, huh, pretty fast throw. And but the faster than a gun. He draws his gun again and shoots at Luffy. Luffy actually kills his stomach in arm and hockey and takes the explosion head on. Luffy says, oh, you ruined my, you ruined my, you ruined my favorite shirt. And Mr. Five sees Luffy's unharmed. Luffy's not on the, like, any person after the New World know what hockey is unless he knows they use it as well. There's a stomach as Zoro woken up and some loud, loud yells heard, Onigiri. Or Zoro yelling, Onigiri! And will slash Mr. Five through the back and and he just falls to the ground unconscious, maybe even dead. Well, like, the group that Luffy used something called Flash on, some of them are dead. Like, they 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 are dead from Blood Loss. Or it's just an impact of Luffy's slash. And then Miss Valentine, she was like a little confused, tried to like just drop herself on Zoro as she was in the air a little bit. But Nami would jump through the sky and hit her in the side of the face as Usopp had just said, Firebird Star, and hit her with it. And she, I'm going to say Lead Ball. Usopp had to use Lead Ball and hit her inside the face with it. That's enough to knock her out and break some break some, break some bones in her face, I guess. I mean, Usopp high five, but that was a pretty good teamwork, team, like, team using move. Well, Zoro really killed a blade to Mr. Five's head, saying, Should I do it? Luffy says, Uh, the word for crocodile. And Igaron is actually surrounded. Like, he walks towards him, holding his hands up, saying, Yes, they do. And I am his, I'm kind of like Miss Phoebe's assistant, or bodyguard, or whatever you want to say. Luffy says, Wait, really? And then he remembers what Phoebe said. No one knows that she's Princess Phoebe except Mr. Nine and Igaron. And it's Monday. And, and crocodile, of course. Luffy hears this saying, okay, oh, yeah, you just called her B, so, so that works. And Luffy says, yeah, Zoro, go ahead, do, do what you want. Zoro mm, would slash Mr. Five's head off. Well, not off, but he slashed his neck. But it resembles his head being, like, it was, looked like his head was just cut off, but Zoro just cut his neck. And the, except just held out, like, he grabbed a pistol and pointed it towards, towards Miss, or towards Miss Valentine, as he said, Luffy, I don't know if I can do it. He was like, oh, of course you can. And he poked his finger and the gun went off. Like he, like he was like quickly jabbed his up his finger and it scared him as he just spied the gun. And he says, there you go, your first kill. And he walks away. He says, says, Kobe, I'm going to get the ship ready for us to leave. Tell Vivi she says she's free to go. And she, I'm saying they actually found Karu and Mr. And not Mr. Nine. Iram had just said, you know, oh, that's Vivi's pet. T -t take, take Karu with them, with you. He says, okay, sure. Got on Karu's back as Karu just was felt felt Luffy's power and he went on. Um, Karu got on the ship and Vivi was just chilling with Karu the whole time. Now they get to Whiskey Peak with him, with Miss Monday being with them some because Yurum Yurum insisted she goes with him. So Miss Monday is being treated. Igram I'm just talking to Vivi for a bit. Mister Nine still in like their own like still in a holding cell basically. And their holding cell is just like this is this is this their training room. Like the corner of the training room, he's just tied up with tied up, like, tied wall with rope. Like just in his underwear, covered in rope. <laughs> so yeah. Now, now when they get to whiskey, not whiskey peak, when they get to little garden, little garden, when they get there, they still meet the giants, Dory and Broggy. But this time, they won't really like they won't fight out of just like thinking someone cheated. They're fighting like regular because Mr. Five is dead. Miss Valentine is dead as well. So that's all, that's all I can kind of say. Uh, when Mr. Three and Miss Golden Week attack, Luffy like I'm he said like he's just sitting in his tree until he feels something about to, like like he feels something he's about to like just make him. He feels killer intent, not killer intent, but just evil evil intent behind it. All of a sudden, he turns around and flashes the air, or he thinks it was the air. But in reality, he cut off the, the top, like he almost scalped Miss Golden. He almost scalped her, as she like she feels a little bit of blood trickle from her head, but the large majority of her hair is gone now. She drops her paintbrush and she just says, oh, "I apologize. It won't happen again." And she runs off. Luffy says, "Wait, wait, little brat. There's no way. There's no way that could have been you." As he easily grabs her, and he throws her to Nami. He then says, "As." He says, he says you're, you're, he like stutter saying, uh, you're better, you're better, you're better women. He's a little embarrassed to, to like just say he's not really good with any kind of female, like at all. He's terrible with it. As Luffy, the only female in, like, interaction he's had is with like, 
is with Dadan, Makino, and Nami. That's really it. And maybe some females are like Kokugashi, Kokugashi Village, but that's like very mild. Because he's, he doesn't want to admit he's better, he better be better with men than women. And most of the most women he's met, besides like Makino and Nami and Nojiko, they have been very masculine, so he compared them to men. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I thought, I thought Donald was like a man, but just had female hair. That's all I thought about her, was like the first episode or two. But, uh, yeah. Now, um, Mr. 3, he, he, like, he saw Luffy throw him golden to Nami. And, let's say, I, I, Luffy's hair's, like, I had, like, a little drawing of what I thought Luffy would look like. So, uh, hmm. So, Luffy, Luffy's appearance. So, he has, like, a Zoro-level muscle. He's, like, a Zoro-level muscle. And then, his hair is kind of like Sanji's, but a little more messy. And, it's down to his shoulders, covering one eye. But there's like a little bit, like a little gap where you can see, you can see like his, his, his iris at least, or his pupil. And his pants, he was like, if you guys know like the Ambu pants or, or Kakashi's pants from Naruto, he wears those kind of things, but it's the same, like, he has the same sandals, and they have bandages from like his feet all the way to his knee. And then his shirt is just a basic, actually at this point he's, he just wears a tank top or a shirt list the whole time, as, as uh, you guys remember. Strife kind of blew a hole through his shirt. But, um, yeah. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying Luffy's just shirtless the whole time until he gets a new shirt. Because he, he just washed that same, the same shirt over and over. Like, when, they, when, when he wakes up, take it off, take off the shirt, showers, washes the shirt, then puts, then puts it on. But, uh, yeah. So, Luffy needs a new shirt. And he's a little bit taller, like, around... He's on, like, it's like six foot, so a little bit taller. Like he's also in the crew, but he's he's also in the crew. But Zoro and Sanji are like close behind him in height. Now, uh, yeah, back to the story. He, Mr. Three had saw his golden week be thrown, and he just used like he just used a bunch of like if they if they sense his golden week, he, they must be strong. So he jumped out using his second strongest attack, which is second strongest attack. What I think which I think would be like the giant, like turning everyone to not mold, but Covering them in wax is basically a thing. First, use that moment, like, like I guess little little candle things are is like made. Luffy no station. Well, this the thing just says, can this be like can this be strong as I think it could be? Holds a little sword up in the air as he says, and he says purple multi multi dimension slash. He comes the sword to the ground as it's coated in armament hockey, and large slash will come through the sword, cut through the giant like direct candle thing. Then through all the forest, through a few animals, and finally reaches the end of the island. We look through the trail of destruction he made, saying, "Oh wow, that's strong." In reality, that was just a mix of his own physical strength and mixed with arm and hockey. And Mr. Three, Mr. Like everyone's, everyone's looking at Luffy, Dory, and Broggy are like, "If we were caught in that, we'd be cut. We'd be cut clean in two, and then still reach the end of the island." We, we just laugh, saying, "Saying, oh, a candle wax guy, one we couldn't have." It's like volunteering like a magic trick. So he says, what the hell? No. He then uses, uses his candle champion tries to punch Luffy. Luffy punches his arm using arm hockey into his fist and it, it's destroyed easily. Luffy's, Luffy's physical strength could have blown the arm to bits either way, but he wanted to make sure it wouldn't just freeze on around his arm. So he used arm hockey to like, just hold the wax. And then once once like he sees arm hockey, like a molded arm falls on top of Luffy as he then says, ooh. He punches the rest of the candle champion using his wax arm or it's like a wax glo wax glove I I'd say it is. But he just punches the rest of the Kindle Champion and the rest of it is destroyed. You guys Mr. Three by the neck saying there's gonna be one reason not to break this neck or not to break your neck right now. There's three not only what Luffy wants, he even says, uh, your bounty would increase and even wanted by even more Marines. He even says, pretty good reason. This holds the blade to Mr. Five's head saying saying this way of killing you might might give it a high rate since I got close to you without being turned to wax. Mr. Mr. Three says, "Oh God, he wants to be wants to be wants a higher bounty." He says, hmm, "I have a better idea." He swings. He picks up Mr. Three by the legs and swings him around as fast as he can, like spinning in a circle. He spins in a circle, swinging Mr. Five, Mr. Five, Mr. Three around. He's throwing him over, 
Like, I'm pretty sure this volcano that went off for like every few minutes to tell Dragon Bregman to fight. We threw Mr. 3 over that and into an area full of dinosaurs. Mr. Pride, Mr. Pride, Mr. 3, got stop. He would have fallen to his death, but something stopped it. And some animals in the front of Mr. 3 and chased him through, through the woods. His golden week would be, would be tied up and sent out in a small dinghy. Ray Rocky would say, would say goodbye to their new friends as the rest of the tribes head to Alabasta. But Luffy gets sick this time. Not anyone else, just Luffy. As he was shirtless the whole time and was was walking around the most and was wandering. So Luffy is the one that gets sick. But he's thinking it better than Nami as he's like, eh, don't worry about it. But they're talking on a nearby island to call Drum Island for some medicine. This time when the strats are like met, met with the guns by everyone. So walks out of the ship saying, we're not here for a fight, we're sure to get our captain some medicine. They don't, like, they don't believe him, Zoro just coaches, like, the tip of the sword in armament hockey and will slash the air. A small, small slash will come out of Zoro's sword, as all the guns will be split in half, but the villagers are unharmed. Dolphin's like, what the hell was that? They jump down on the ship trying to fight Zoro. Luffy, even, even, even being sick, will try Dalton halfway through the forest. And they think Luffy's sick until they see him, like, cough up, like, it's a lot of, a lot of, like, like snot and everything, like he's coughing heavily. And I didn't see that this crew is far superior to them if, they, if the sick one, like the sickest one, beat Dalton in a single punch. So Luke, Luke gets off the boat saying, Where's the nearest doctor? They point to like the castle as they say, uh, Our leader's left, so you can go, go up there if you want, because the like, doctors on the island, like the last two, stay up there when, when he's gone. Luke says, Oh, that's gonna be troublesome. And he takes Sino and Sino and you send with him. As he then says, uh, Kobe, would you mind coming with me? And Usopp, you can you could use some exercise, so you come so you come with. Kobe and Sanji and, and, and Usopp Kobe and Usopp agree as they go with Luffy. And they get to the, the they get to the tall tower. And Luffy gets, Luffy gets the, like the animals. Kobe and, and Usopp easily handled them. Like Kobe and Usopp just like punched or, or shot something at them to get for them to go away. Luffy didn't fight any of them as he would Again. Sorry about that. But they climb up the mountain and Luffy like almost passes out halfway through, but Usopp kind of puts Luffy on his back and will climb the rest of the way. Usopp feeling the extra weight, he like well, not, not feeling it, but he's just tired up by fast by the extra weight, like 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 a quarter of it left. Kobe so then says, I can I can tough this out as he grabs Usopp and he puts Usopp on his back and puts Luffy in his mouth. Now he climbs almost the, like almost the rest of the way until it's like with Kobe's height, I'd say it's like, like at least like five more movements of climbing, or at least five more climbing motions. Luffy's finally waking up. He then says, Kobe, you don't need to do, you don't need to do this. If he ends up grabbing Usopp off, out of Kobe's mouth, and with his height, and if he, if he, say he draws his sword and stabs it into the top of that mountain. Now it's barely in there, but Luffy coats an arm in hockey so it's more durable and doesn't break. Luffy puts Usopp in his mouth and grabs Kobe. As he pulls himself up using his blade. And he pulls Kobe up as well. He stands up as his hands are purple, so is Kobe's and Usopp are purple as well. Now he is he still has a lot more energy left as he just woke up from a nap, I guess, but he's cold. He will drag him into the castle. Now Dr. Rina is seeing what Luffy's doing. Like she's got there, she's she sees what Luffy's doing. Luffy doesn't notice her. He goes in the castle, he doesn't want to close the door so that he saw the animals. She's inside, he finds the, the, doc, the doctor's room, he puts Kobe on the bed and Usopp in a chair. But Usopp is like just covered in tons of blankets. Luffy goes outside and he wants to move the birds so it's not even colder. He comes up and even he gently moves the birds to open the window. And he goes in there, puts the bird on the, on the window sill, closes the door to that room, at least the window's open. Then by the time he goes inside, he sees Dr. Dr. and Chopper waiting, waiting at the doors. And Luffy says, help them first. As he points to the room weakly. Chopper then says, says oh, let, me, let me do this, Dr. Reen. Shepard buffs up and grabs Luffy and carries him inside. And he slams the door shut. Now, a Dr. Green will treat Kobe and Sanji, not Sanji, Kobe and Usopp. I almost say Sanji each time, I don't know why. But Kobe and Usopp are treated first, and then Chopper will treat Luffy. Once Dr. Green is done, she, she clears out all the snow and everything and heats it up. The birds, they're not really in a room with heat, so they're okay being cold. So Luffy wakes up at around three hours, he coughs a bit, saying, eh, I already feel better. And that's when Charbon said, that's like one of the worst insects in this part. How are you already okay? Luffy says, eh, 
Uh, Fushi Village had, had some worse animals. Or bugs. Go chop into this. According to my map, that's like one of the most peaceful areas of the of the East Blue. We look into this. Yeah, whatever. That's when Chopper and says, like, most deadly bug you have there is enough to keep you sick for at least a week. Look says, oh, I've often been by, a, like, a whole nest of them. Chopper, Chopper, Chopper says, that's deadly. Luffy says, yep, yeah, I know, that's why I lived. Like, Luffy, won't, Luffy lives for anything deadly, no matter what it is. It's like, he's not like, Chopper's, like, debating whether Luffy's lying or not, because Luffy, Luffy starts something that's almost impossible to live through. So, um, yeah. Now, it takes, like, a day or two. Actually, I'm gonna say, like, I'm gonna say, like, like another four or five hours for Sanji, ah, Sanji, for Usopp and Koei to wake up. Those two wake up, and they're okay now, and they walk out. That's right, they're all better, and they've already talked, I've talked to everyone, they're okay now, and they've been noticed about, like, the old swords are okay since they didn't really do too much. Mr. Mr. Nine, Miss Monday, Igaram, Vivi, they, they, they should be on a ship, that's it. But, Trusts are okay now, like, they're not being threatened, but they're not threatened anymore. And we still doesn't notice that Ace was on Drum Island. But they're, they're better a lot earlier, so they set out, they set sail again. But halfway through them leaving, Chopper does, does still do the cruise. He wants to see, like, he wants to learn an experience on Luffy. That's, like, the main reason he wants to go. Like, Chopper just goes to see how, see how much Luffy can survive. Because Luffy can survive something impossible in his eyes. But Dr. Eden will let Chopper go. So yeah, now they go, and on the way there, Chopper will tell the story of Dr. Here Luke to Luffy. Luffy just smiles, saying, Dr. Here Luke sounds amazing. And Chopper just says, like, he'll look back at Drum Island, not Drum, at the Drum Castle, saying, the flag isn't there. He's like, where'd the flag go? Luffy holds it, holds it up, saying, it could be a nice decoration for your bedroom. Chopper, Chopper then says, what do you mean, my bedroom? Luffy then says, oh, you're my, you're my, my ship's new doctor. Chopper says, I didn't agree to that, I'm just escorting you guys back. He says, oh, you don't get a choice. Do I do it willingly or I kidnap you? Chopper, Chopper then says, eh, fine. Because the doctor only allowed Chopper to like, like walk into the ship. She's listening in, but she's not because she's not too far behind. But she hears Chopper willingly agree to go. She's like, all right, you can go with them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a fit. I'm not, I'm not gonna throw a fit. We get to the ship, and Luffy had drawn a new flag, like almost the exact same design, before he had taken Doctor Hewlett's actual flag. And before, like, you know, Dawson will see the flag thing, saying, what do you do with that flag? Luffy holds out a new one as, as if it kind of flies to Dawson. Luffy says, well, we leader should be back in a few days, I guess. So, if we, if we intercept him on the sea, I'm going to kill him. You can take over this kingdom. We're worthy of it. And Luffy will smile as Chopper and Luffy, Kobe, and Usopp get on the ship, and they set sail again with the rest of the strats. Sanji, Sanji kicks, up, kicks up a new feast and welcome Chopper to the crew, and... Yeah, about a day or two away from like about like a day in the sailing, they find they find um, Wapo and Mushiru's ship mixed with mixed with Kuro Marimo and Chess. Those are the, those are the two guards. Chess will fire like a few arrows at Luffy as he thinks he's the toughest one. He is the toughest one as Luffy grabs each and every arrow and throws it back at double the speed. Chess gets like three arrows, one with, like I'm gonna say two two in the shoulders and one through his stomach. He walks to the ground and Kuro, Kuro Marty Moon says, How can you fall someone so weak? Then Chopper will jump in the air, saying, Luffy is not weak. As he buffs up and punches Kuro Marty Moon in the face as hard as he can. He's then flying in the water, and then Luffy will grab Chopper so he doesn't fall into the ocean. Luffy puts Chopper on the ship, saying, Eh, nice job. Wapple will try to bite down Luffy, but that's when Sanji then says, says, Don't bite our ship, as the jaw was wide enough to bite a the chunk of the, of the Mary. Sanji kicks kicks Wapole away into the water. Ushiru then tells Kurdo Marimo to grab to grab Wapole. He, he agrees. Now Mushiru will jump at Luffy. Now him and Luffy look like can get this like a small or short hand to hand combat battle. Luffy's able to like just shove off every punch or kick that lands. Even if mushrooms do grow on him, he's able to get them off pretty quickly. At one point he uses the arm hockey and fuse fist and punches him so hard in the face that he's like, flying off of the off the Mary into the water pretty far away. Chess being injured still save them, but will be attracted will be will attract sharks, definitely. But um yeah, ladies rock is alabasta, and I'm gonna leave it there. If you guys enjoy this part, this, this part, this part, I'm dumb, I'm sorry. This part and and um light goal for this one actually. 
want to get at least 20 likes in five hours, and that'll, that'll signify you want to add one new part. So 20 likes in five hours. So you guys can manage that at least now. Um, bye.